Right, so don't forget to turn in the lab data from Thursday of last week. Actually, there are two sheets. We have Boyle's Law and the color-coded electrolysis of water. Make sure you turn both of those in. Fine gas law, we have six variables. How many do they have to give you to solve for this problem? Five. Yeah, they have to give you five of the variables to solve. This is basic algebra. So keep that in mind. Now the first problem up here it says the pressure in an automobile tire is 1.88 atm at 25 degrees Celsius. What would the pressure be if the temperature increases to 37 degrees Celsius? Now they're saying the volume and the gas are constant. That means they're the same. So volume is not going to change and the uh, let's see here. Board up here. The initial problem was for uh, Gay Lussac's law. I apologize for that. I looked on the wrong page. So here we are. We're trying to review the combined gas law. Gay Lussac's law is right here, where you have P and T. And what law is P times V? Do anybody remember? P1 times V1 equals P2 times T, uh, V2. What is that? Um, yeah, but what law? We did it on Thursday. It was the law you did on Thursday. Yeah, so it's, uh, what's his name? Charles Lucas. Okay. No. It's the one you did on Thursday. Right, it's Boyle's Law. So if you look at the sheet that you just turned in from Thursday, it says... Boyle's Law, right there, Boyle's Law. That's what we did on Thursday, the pressure volume. It was a cylinder, and you changed the pressure and the volume of it. And then the one we demonstrated last week where we had V over T with the um, fire syringe, what law is that? I changed the volume and the temperature heated up inside the fire syringe. Starts with a C. No. Raise your hand. <laughs> oh, it's Charles. Charles Law. All right, it says the pressure doubles. So you have to double that. It's not too difficult. They could have just said 2.6, but they're saying it doubles. So they're messing with you a little bit and your ability to think like qualitatively and then throw that into a quantitative thing. Because they're giving you a picture, and then you got to mathematically show that. And then we add our 273, and then we're going to solve for V2. So V2 up here is right there. So let's isolate V2. I'm going to isolate V2 first, and then put the number, the values. Apply this times T2, right? And that T2 will cross out, and now I have T2 over here. Now I've got one more to isolate, I get rid of, that's the P2, so I'm going to take you know, 1 over P2, see how that'll cross out here, then I got 1 over P2 over here, so my formula is going to end up being T2 times P1 times V1 over P2 times T1 equals V2. It's much easier to set your formula up first and then plug, plug your variables in. It just solves a lot faster. You tend to make fewer mistakes this way as well. All right, very good. So Adam is correct now. Make sure you try it with the parentheses. If you do it without the parentheses, you get like five million, the wrong answer. That's part of the reason why they have that. Please, I say that again. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What do they call that again? Pendos. Pendos. Yeah, so Pendos. Parentheses are very important. 72 is close to your original volume of 146. It shouldn't be, you know, like 7,000. It should be fairly close to your original. This is like half. 72 is half of 146. So that if the pressure doubles, right, there's going to be a pretty close relationship happening there. The pressure temperature. That's Gay-Lussac's law. I believe that's a direct relationship. And volume temperature is direct, and pressure volume is indirect. Uh, very good.
All right, so up here on the board, my SD card is not the greatest in the world. So up here we have the audio gas law, and we're building on the combined gas law. Do you see how we're, we just added N? So N is what? It was, what does N represent? Number of moles. Very good, Michaela. So we have N1 and N2. Now this is where the audio gas law becomes useful for us, because in science, Cody, it's really about what you have. It's like if you're selling eggs and you don't know how many eggs are in your carton, it can be a problem because people will steal from you. I know you wouldn't think that they will, but people will. So knowing what you have is very important. That's kind of the goal wherever you work. That's why people do inventories usually once a month uh, to check and see what they've got on file so people don't steal from them. Up here, what we're going to do, how many variables do you have to have in order to solve this problem? How many of the variables? Yeah, you have to have seven. That's a lot. It's going to take a lot of time to deal with all that. So instead of having seven, what they do, they take the initial ones, and they're going to say under ideal conditions, we're going to give you these. So what would be the, your ideal pressure, your standard pressure? What's your standard pressure, anybody know? Yeah, it's on the board up here, 1 ATM. So you're going to have uh, 1 ATM. Yep. And what's your standard volume? You might know. 1. Standard volume. Well, in the book, they show you that the standard volume. Oh, 33.3. It's 22.4 liters. Okay. Oh, it says it right there. <laughs> yeah, do you see the 22.4? Yeah. yeah. Right, so... Analyzing the problem that's in that variable. Yeah, 22.4 liters oh. is your uh, standard temperature, a correction standard volume. The values. So I said one atmosphere. <laughs> you have to be consistent about your values because if you look on page 454 in your book, you'll see the liters atmosphere, mole K. There's a lot of different units you can choose. You can choose liters, a kilopascal, that's a lot to say, kilopascal, mole, and then uh, Kelvin. It's always Kelvin, so that's easy to deal with. And then you have LMM, HG, that would be liters, millimeters, mercury, and then mole K. So there's three different values for R. These are the values for R. Now which one is the most common? Which of the three? The middle one. 8.314 is used the most. So when you go on into physics, you're going to see 8.314 used the most. So you're going to see that kilopascal. Pascal is something that's very common in physics. It's a physics unit that uh, they, they like to use a lot. So that's why it's the most common. Physics now is kind of dominating or putting influence on chemistry and that we're using this particular value for R. Now up here on the board I need to change my unit because if I go with atmosphere I'm not going to get 8.134 so I'm going to go up here with the value that they have in the book here on page 341 and that's 101.3 kPa. So we have our eight ideal gas law variables and they've taken four of them and they've isolated them, they've given them a new value called R. So R is associated with these ideal conditions, 22.4 liters, one mole, 273, zero Kelvin. Zero Kelvin is very cold. So in your ideal conditions, you should have a mole of gas, um, and then you're gonna have zero K, well this is actually zero degrees Celsius, correction. Zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin. If you remember up here, Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273. So that would be zero degrees Celsius. This is zero degrees Celsius. There's a lot of little things they put together. And their goal, once again, is to find the number. So the law, you got to be keep track of a lot of li little things here. So this ends up equaling... 
0.31. You can't forget the units though. All we're doing is simplifying these units. K P A times liters divided by mole times K. Yeah, you can't get rid of the unit. You can't just dismiss it. You can't just say, well, R is equal to 8.31. No, that's not right. This is wrong. You have to have the units there. Yes, because all you're doing is simplifying these variables. This is very important to understand. If you get this, and you're like, well, okay, the ideal gas law is very simple. So the ideal gas law basically says PV equals NRT. That's nerd. <laughs> and this R is right here. And so this is really, it's really P2, V2, T2, if you really want to look at it that way, and then N2. Right, so we're, we're just solving now. We're trying to go a lot faster. The goal now, because you really only, how many variables do you need now to solve this problem? Yeah, there's four variables, but this is given, right? So you really you only need three. So you can go a lot faster with just three. You need a library, but you need to pay attention here. This is important because they're giving you a different unit. In the problem, you have to pay attention to the units. You can't use atmospheres when they're asking or they've given you R as KPA. The three variables want specific units. And if you don't use the units, 5.6 times 101.3 KPA, it's going to be around 500 and something. Once again, you can't have like one foot over here and 12 inches over here, or correction, like one foot over here and like one inch over here. The units represent different amounts. One foot is very different from one inch. So keep this in mind. It's very important to understand when you're doing this because if you follow the units, you'll have no problem with this in physics. Mr. Simon, if I don't do numbers, this crosses out. <laughs> this crosses out. We have T2. T2 equals this right here. Now make sure you use your parentheses. You might want to come up here and do that. All right, so is correct with 204. Oh, I lost the answer. It's right here. Oh, okay. 204.7. I did it again. Did it again. All right. Did it again. It's 204.7. And that's very close to our ideal 273. So that's, you kind of want to know what the ideals are so you can see that you're close to it. If she got like 2,000, she'd want to check her math again. I'm on pressure volume and temperature and the number of moles of a gas. This formula, it works best for gases that obey the assumptions of the kinetic. Okay, your initial temperature is 273 and that's a lot higher than 273. So I would check it again. Use your parentheses, parentheses 5, 6, 7 times 12 parentheses. Uh, milliliters. <laughs> Very good, 72.2 milliliters. ...into a single mathematics statement that describes the relationship among pressure, volume, temperature, uh, and number of moles, uh, moles of a gas. This formula works best for gases that obey the assumptions of kinetic molecular theory, known as ideal gases. ...in a volume of 12 liters, what is the temperature? All right, so what we want to do... The unit is not uh, KPA. The it's unit KPA. is temperature. It's K. Oh, it's just K? Yeah, it's K. Can you help me? Oh, okay. so, no, I don't see the other mole. Right. You're up here with one mole. Okay. So 142 is the answer for mole. Okay, so we're just trying to find them. Yeah, the mole. So, B, 142 mole. Wow! Our uh, Koenig is close, but his answer is not right. Nice job, Koenig. 72 is correct.